And what's going on, everybody? Your boy Blake Money, Blake Weather, another episode of the Loaded Joe's MMA podcast. Of course, I'd love to start this just off the bat, but of course we got sponsors. Have to shout them out because most of the time they uh, they keep the lights on, they keep me clothed, they uh, keep me looking fresh, and they keep my life just a little bit more easier. So big shout outs, of course, Fightbook MMA. Check them out, all your latest news and notes for everything as far as MMA, combat sports goes. You find us, you find us. Uh, Everybody else, um, and you can also find uh, friends of, of our our guest who's about to be there. Loudmouth MMA shout outs to them, um, and uh, check out our next sponsor. Of course, one of my favorites. I use them every time I take a shower. I don't do nothing else without them. I don't even know how life was possible without them. Zen Soap. Check them out. ZenSoapCo.com. All natural soaps. All natural everything. Um, there you go out to have hair hair balm. I'm ready for for some all natural stuff in my hair. This glue makes my hair all nasty and and you know, I'm ready for them. So check them out if you you have sensitive skin. zensoapco.com. Of course, Gear Athletics. I got my gear hat on. getgearworldwide.com. Um check them out for all your just clothing need, apparels. They have jackets, shirts, uh, shorts, backpacks, everything you need. Uh, shout outs to Austin Kickboxing Academy, another one of our sponsors where I train. So you should train if you come out to Austin. Uh, it's the best place to do it. And uh, of course, NOP Media, where would it be without our logos, badass designs, everything like that. All right, enough of me talking. Go check them out for all your needs. Today's guest is an awesome guest. I've been in touch with them for like, it almost seems like like 100 million years. We haven't gotten them on. We've been busy doing life, but that's a good thing when you're busy. Uh, we do have just the man of the man of uh, Legends of the Cage. Without further ado, uh, we have Mr. Brian Moore. Brian, they see you on TV. How you doing, man? What's going on with you, brother? How you doing? Pretty good. How you doing, Blake? Oh, man. Uh, just another week. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, getting ready for some UFC fights. Coming off the weekend, uh, I mean, uh, you know, just just life, man. <laughs> uh, how's life in your neck of the woods, brother? Busy, man, busy. Uh, I mean, every day it's something new with Legends of the Cage. You know, we got so many great things going on, so many fighters involved. It just every day there's something new to talk about here. So, talk to me. What is what is Legends of the Cage? Let people know what exactly it is they do. Because uh, I, I, you know, I, I think a lot of people have seen the name around if they've if they've seen one of your athletes around. But what is Legends of the Cage? What does it do? What do you do for them? Tell everybody about it, man. Yeah, we we started off with just me and Gary Goodrich. Um, you know, it was a dream to give these fighters that had retired, the guys that had started the sport, and the ladies, you know, of the early MMA, right. that a, a place to reconnect with the fans to feel like they were a part of the sport again. And in the first year, we managed to do that in a huge way through the UFC Expos, the MMA Expo in Syracuse, New York. You know, the fighters got to go out and visit juvenile detention centers and, and hospitals. And it was a great year in 2015. And 2016 only got bigger. You know, last year we did the, the Do Good Things Tour with Gary Goodrich. Um, the documentaries on our website, legendsofthecage.com. You can go on and watch Gary as he toured the state of Ohio. Um and this year, we're, we're really pushing the boundaries. We're, we're going into the helping the athletes, getting these guys money-paying gigs, getting these guys the opportunity to be on the forefront of MMA again and, and back in that fan love that they enjoyed so much. That's awesome, man. Um, and, and how did it start expanding from you and just Gary Goodrich? Um, what happened? You start reaching out. Did he start bringing people in? How, how did all this work, man? Man, it's crazy. I, I'm I'm just a fan like anybody else. I was sitting on my couch watching fights one night. I got on Twitter and reached out to Gary Goodridge. I seen him on there. He's the first fighter I ever watched. And he was gracious enough to start talking to me. And we developed a friendship. And next thing I know, he's introducing me to some great guys like Mark Coleman, Don Fry, Ensign Inouye. And it just grew from there. The need for this in the sport, for somebody to recognize what these guys did to build the empire that is the UFC and Bellator and, and all these organizations today, it started in the small grassroots MMA fights in dirty buildings. You know, these guys being transported to Puerto Rico because they couldn't fight here. These are the stories we're trying to save and, and let the fans know that MMA started before the ultimate fighter won. You right, know, right. a lot of fans, 
know that. Right, for sure, man. Um, and, and that's interesting, man. Like, so it, it's kind of like I think how a lot of us start. It was just you, Twitter. Was it Twitter? You reached out to Gary on Twitter, or yep. was it another social medium? Twitter. <laughs> Twitter <maybe. laughs> yeah. It seems like that's how many, so many of us in the fucking community connect with each other. It's just like, hey, what's up? You're doing this. We got to connect on some shit. Like, it just seems like that's naturally, like, that's almost what it's there for, for our community. Like, that's the beauty of, I think, a social medium, like, like of that magnitude. Was that how you connected with everybody else, or was it actually, you got to be on phone calls, or, I mean, how did, how did that go, man? What was he, that yeah, must have been I exciting. Mean, oh, yeah, because I went from, like, not knowing one fighter, never talking to a fighter in my life, to talking to some of the greatest, most inspirational people I've ever watched in the sport within a month. I mean, Legends of the Cage, once I started, it started as just a concept, you know, just knowing these guys needed something. And just for somebody to reach out and want to be a part and want to help them get back into it, they they welcomed me with open arms. You know, I've made some really great friends, Enzo Gracie, Art Davey, Burt Watson. I mean, it's the list goes on and on. And it just, to me, it's the greatest opportunity I've ever been given. And I'm not going to squander it. You know, we're working on some great things to preserve the sport for the the fans we're working on a museum right now that we're going to be bringing to the fans in 2017 it's going to be a great place to come the legends can come they can do seminars we're going to make it a home base for the legends not just a museum for the fans you know and to us that's the thing we just want to preserve this sport yeah and, and i think it's important to recognize like those pioneers of the sport like Gary Goodrich and like your Mark Coleman's and Don Fry's and you know everybody like that man like it's important to remember them because I feel like as much as the UFC wants to you know put these I think that that they're now starting to do it uh with the they're starting to do those features on like UFC Fight Pass like they had uh Dan Severn uh it was I, I forget what they call it it's like a, but it's like a featurette and it was so fucking cool to kind of revisit yeah. history because I didn't like for me I have a UFC I mean I don't say UFC I have an MMA podcast but I didn't get into in MMA until UFC ninety six so I didn't know about a whole bunch like I didn't see like my first interaction was with Coleman was him fighting uh right right but it was right after his fight with Shogun Hua you know uh he he yeah. last the last time I saw him fight was. Him and Randy Couture, you know, like uh, back in 2010. Like, so this is my first interact. Like, imagine me as a fan who's like, I'm a, I like to think of myself as a hardcore fan, but that's my first interaction with fighters like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's nice to see, like, I hear them on, you know, MMA Roasted. Like, I love that, that podcast. I hear yeah. Mark Coleman on there, and they've had Gary Good. Like, it's nice to see these guys get some recognition, like, now. You know what I mean? Uh, it's well, gotta, it's got to be, it's, and it's got to be good, a good feeling for you when you hear them, you know, publicly. Well, that was our whole goal, you know. And as far as the UFC finally acknowledging these guys, you know, we've done a lot to push it to the forefront, and we can take no credit for that. It's the fans. I mean, the fan love. All we did was bring these guys back so they could reconnect, and the fans have picked it up tremendously. You know, Gary Goodridge went from. 2,500 Twitter followers to 70,000 since we started. I mean, the UFC brought us out for the expo in 2015, and they did a Legends panel, and we had six guys from Legends of the Cage on the panel. And Don Fry happened to be one of them, you know, and they seen the fan love. They seen the lines longer for the Legends than they were for some of their current stars, <laughs> you know. And it, I think it really opened eyes to the UFC and Dana White that these guys – are an integral part of history, and they have to be recognized as that. You can't erase the SEG days. You just can't do it. Right, right. I mean, and, and as much as like the, I think they're in the Zufa period. They kind of wanted to steer away from the SEG days. Everything kind of pre two thousand two thousand one. It was like, well, that was like a dark part of, but it's an important part of our. I think, I think our history is, it's something that it's such a young sport that. There's not another sport I can I, I don't even know if football evolved this fast when it was first made, you know what I mean? Like of all the strides that um 
the sport has taken, like in any other sport, I mean, somebody like Don Fryer or Mark Coleman may as well be a hundred years old. Like that's how fast we've made strides. And you know, does that make any? Does that kind of make any sense? Like, uh, oh, yeah. you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know, it's it's come a long way so fast, and there's not been. I can't think of any other sport that's made those strides as fast as as MMA. What was? Let me t- tell me your story though, Brian. What was your first interaction? When the first time you're like, you saw it, and you're like, "Fuck, this is amazing. This this sport is uh, it's in my soul now." When did you get addicted, man? I'm- I remember the exact moment. Yes, yes. The exact moment. I went to a buddy's house one day, and he said, you've got to see this. And we went in his basement, and he pulled out the old UFC VHS tapes and popped in. UFC 8, David versus Goliath in Puerto Rico. (laughs) Oh, man. He just fast forwards us through the message to Gary Goodridge versus Paul Herrera. Very first fight I ever watched, you know? And the moment... He flipped him into that crucifix and started landing the elbows. I was addicted. It was, it was an issue. I needed to find a, a, an anonymous group to go talk to about my fight. <laughs> that moment on. There we go, man. And now you have Twitter. You can talk all about it. That's a- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where all the MMA addicts go. Yeah, <laughs> we're First all there. <laughs> That's right, man. We're all there, brother. We're all there with you, man. Um, yeah, amazing moment. If anybody doesn't remember what we're talking about you've probably seen the highlight black guy in a gi he uh basically gets a reverse crucifix on um on on just you see like a normal looking white guy i don't want to say white guy either because it's it's herrera you know but like and all you see is these elbows just coming real fast like like 18 elbows in a matter of like two <laughs> seconds and the guy is just like you think he's dead, but he's not dead, obviously. But like, if if anybody's seen that highlight, you know what I'm talking about. Go look up Gary Goodrich, Paul Rare. You know exactly what we're talking about. As soon as you'll be like, "Oh my God, yeah, that's a pivotal moment. That's a pivotal highlight that you see when they do like um, when they had even that uh in 2013, the 20, the best of the 20 years or the 20 year. You know, you know they had that whole big thing. It was like November of 2013. It was. Uh, I remember the pay per view right right after that. It was uh, GSP Johnny Hend- Johnny Hendricks, excuse me. Uh, but they had this like whole big deal. Like it was like the top two hundred fights. It was like twenty years. It had like Art Davy in it. Um, what's his name? Uh, is it uh, Lauren McCampbell? Like they had him in there. Campbell Everybody. Campbell McLaren. Yep. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Um, Campbell McLaren, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had everybody from from the SCG days, and it was just an amazing. But that was one of the highlights. That was one of the pivotal highlights because that was when I think people saw like, oh my God, when you combine groundwork with like strikes, like you make a monster like Gary Goodrich. Like he he was incredible at that. Yeah, at that moment, like no ball sucking right now. Like that was an incredible moment in the sport. And and it's incredible to think it was in Puerto Rico because of it couldn't happen in the states here. I, I mean, we've just we've just come so far from this. We, to we, think that that fight changed MMA rules. Yeah, you know, I mean, that fight alone killed the twelve to six elbow. You know, and it's it's guys like him and and guys like Tank trying to throw people out of the cage that, <laughs> that made the rules that are today. You know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. Without these guys, we wouldn't have this sport. And, and that's why it's so important that we reach out to the fans and let them know, you know, if, if there was a fight you loved or a fighter that you, you watched as a kid that you idolized, reach out and talk to that fighter. Reach out and tell them on Twitter, you know, because nothing feels better to them than to know that the fans still think about the fights they had, you know. It's amazing how humbling some of these fighters are. Like, I've reached out to them via Twitter and just, yeah, I've gotten some of my, my I don't know, my best guests or some i've got in contact with some awesome people just over twitter like because i think before i was in you know doing a podcast like i would just feel like no man these fighters are you know they're celebrities they're above i mean and i still look at them that way like they're these uh, these people that i'll never be but being a podcast host like you get to see a different the human side of them like they're just people like me and you and they appreciate the fact that people just take the time to recognize their body of work, whether they won or lost. Like, they've, if somebody's taking the time to watch their fights and reach, <coughs> reach out and say, you've inspired me to do this, or 
I remember when you did this. Like, I remember that moment. That was that was awesome. Or, or that was, you, it, you know, win or loss. Like I said, win, loss, or draw. Like, I think most of these fighters, they feel that appreciation. Am I, am I right? I mean, wasn't that your experience when you, I guess you started to reach out to some of these pioneers of the sport, man? Man, I honestly, I didn't think I would get the welcome I did, you know, and the fighters have been, the fighters have made legends of the cage. Without them, we wouldn't exist, you know. It's the fans and the fighters that, that keep us going every day, that keep me doing what I do. And yeah, to them, it's the biggest thing is to just be remembered. You know, they, they want somebody to talk about what they did. And that, that's why we're working so hard towards this TV program that we're, that we're working on right now. The movie, I mean, there's so many things that we want to be able to bring these fighters back and, and let the fans remember the sport. Um, we're working on a museum program right now that, that's based on our museum. And it's, it's going to talk about these fighters in detail, their contribution. Are they talking about like so? You're talking about like an actual physical museum somewhere. Where is this? Where is the idea? Where is this going to be? Or is is that what I'm yeah. understanding? Yeah, I mean, we have hands down one of the the best collections in the world of MMA memorabilia. I um, so yeah, thousands of pieces. The fans are going to be shocked to see what we've managed to do in three years. You know, um, it's going to be a physical building. We're in talks right now with several cities around the country, uh, Las Vegas, Pittsburgh. We're, we're dealing with a couple of decent-sized organizations, should I say, um, <laughs> that, that want to be a part, you know. But we, we've tried to gear ourselves towards not tying ourselves to any one organization, you know. Um, we represent all of MMA, the early days, Valley Tudo, Hook and Shoot, um, Bellator and Victor UFC. I mean, they're all going to be represented in this museum. So it's hard for us to tie ourselves to any one organization, but definitely we're coming in 2017. We're, we're, we're planning on a grand opening by early 2018 at the latest. Oh, that's awesome, man. That That is all. I think that an MMA fan like me needs some place to, to make a pilgrimage. You know what I mean? Like baseball fans have their physical hall of fame and like, my grandpa, he's a huge baseball fan. He always talks, oh, I went to go see, you know, he used to live in New York, so he would, I forget where it's at, somewhere on the East Coast. But, like, there's an actual physical, like, baseball Hall of Fame. Like, MMA fans, I, I'm, I'm foaming at the mouth for a place like that. And whether it's in Vegas or, or Pittsburgh, you know, there would be an a, a ample amount of people to 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 see this and and that would just, you know, flat out just support this and, and totally be there. And uh, uh, that's just monumental, man. I'm, I'm blown away. Uh, I'm blown away at that, man. I'm, I'm excited for that, too. Now, you mentioned something about a movie. Now, last year I talked to – was it last year? Yeah, it was last year. Talked to Art Davey. Yeah, was it last year or the year before? Damn, it was might have been 2015. Jesus Christ, man. Like, that's how much, like, I've, that's how long I've been doing this. Uh, Art Davey was talking about. <laughs> man, I'm 28 years old. I'm losing my fucking mind. Um, but um, Art Davey was talking about a movie that they they might be making a movie, uh, and they probably are right now. It's, it's God, it's two years later. Uh, that is it legal? Now, do you know, have, have any of the legends been contacted or. Or, or are plan on be consulting for anything like this, or is this a separate, different movie you, you're you're talking about entirely? Yeah, I've, actually, I've talked to Art about is it legal? Um, it's definitely going to be out there for the fans at one point, you know. But there's not a whole lot I can talk about the movie right now. Okay. At the point, it's but no, I'm talking about No Way Out. I'm talking about New Vision Films partnering with Legends of the Cage to bring fans the most action-packed MMA movie. That will ever be created in the year 2017. We're doing an open casting call. You know, I'll, I'll put it out right here on your show. We want the greatest fighters in the world. We want the names. We want the faces. If, if you've got the look for a movie, we want it. Um, feel free to reach out to us at legendsofthecage.com. Hit the contact us button. Leave us a bio. Leave us a highlight. Um, explain to us why you want to be in this movie. We're bringing in some of the greatest fighters in the world, some of the best stunt coordinators in the world. Um, Jeffrey Parker, who's the director at New Vision Films, reached out with the idea. Um, we've been in discussions for a while, 
and it's it's time. I mean, there's been several attempts at an MMA based movie, you know, but we plan on making one the fans will never ever forget. I'm with that, man. I'm I'm all about that. Yeah, there has been a number of them. Um, you think about uh, was it Never Back Down? Um, <laughs> um, what was the other one? The one that sticks out was 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 it Fighter or Warrior? Warrior, Warrior, yeah, Warrior with uh, uh, that kid that Joel whatever, and then Tom Hardy was in it. It was Warrior, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's about as close as I think that people have maybe been introduced to MMA. Fight Valley. Fight Valley. That was the other one for as far as women's <laughs> MMA. Fight well, Valley and Lisa Tate. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say I've seen that one yet, though. Honestly, I can't say I've seen that one. Um, but yeah, th- those are the two that stick out. Never back down. That that one was geared toward like me when I had just gotten. I was in college when that came out. That was like a real like kind of new car- new age Karate Kid meets MMA type movie. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, um, but that one was all about. It was like Karate Kid meets MMA. Think about it like that. He gets punked at school. He you know he wants the girl. He meets a teacher. He does MMA. He beats the bad. He beats the bad kid up by the end of the movie. Like it's the new age, Karate Kid with MMA. And then there was Warrior. Don't and he's <laughs> don't worry, man. You didn't miss much. You saw Karate Kid. Don't worry about it. Um, and then there was uh, yeah, there was Warrior, and it had Tom Hardy and and that I forget Joel McWhatever. Uh, he's a good actor. Uh, I just forget his name. But, yeah, it was like the two brothers, and they end up uh, uh, freaking, I think Ryan Bader was in it, and Anthony Johnson was in it, um, and they, they were in the tournament. For those of y'all who remember, y'all know what I'm talking about. And the two brothers end up fighting each other, and they fight each other. It was MMA fights. So for this to happen, like, and that was, again, that was like 2008, 2009. So for this to happen, it might have been later than that. Um, but I'm excited for, to hear something like this is happening. And, of course... Uh, it was Legends of the Cage. What? What was the web? What was the website? Or what was the the email? Yeah, Legends of the Cage dot com. It's our website. You can go on, check out your favorite legends. We have all the links to connect to the legends on our website. Um, our documentary is actually there. And if you want to reach out to us about this movie, just hit the contact us button and send us an email. Um, we're going to be doing open casting within the next month, and we'd like to hear from all the fighters out there. We want to see who wants to be in this movie. That's exciting, man. I'm 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 stoked, man. Um, I'm definitely gonna gonna share this with as many people. I mean, it, it, a whole bunch of fighters and the fight community definitely watches this, and they definitely support us. So shout out to everybody over there. Uh, for sure, send your your resume and and send your headshots, send your highlights, everything like that. Legends of the Cage dot com. Um, real quick, man. How many how many fighters do you? I don't know what the word is. Represent or do you have on the the Legends roster, I mean, you know, it seems like it's just work. kind of everyone. Yeah, that I work for. Um, that's the way I look at it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm here for those guys. But, yeah, there's approximately 50 fighters. Um, Jeez. Everybody, I mean, from UFC 1 all the way through Stefan Bonners and Forrest Griffins. You know, I mean, we, we represent all of MMA. And we have people all across the board. We We've inducted... Big John McCarthy, we've inducted uh, Burt Watson, Art Davey, Monty Cox, you know, I mean, some of the great names of this sport that, that really built it from the beginning. And that's what that's what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to honor everybody that had their hand in making this sport the greatest sport on the planet. That's awesome, man. Let me let me let me hear. I'm sure you, you, you I mean, you've dealt a lot with these fighters. Do you have like a give me a story, man, like you would tell one of your friends be like, oh, my God, check this out. Let me let me tell you this story. Who I don't care who is it with. I want to hear one of your stories you tell at, like, poker night or some shit like that. Tell, tell me a good story, man. I'm ready for story time. Okay, there's, like, 50 I can't <laughs> tell. Okay, I got one. New York. Okay. We were in New York for the expo. Paul the Polar Bear of Arlen's. There's a bunch of kids hanging outside the hotel. And they're, they're wanting autographs, you know, and we're doing a show the next day. We've got a ton of guys there. Joe Riggs, Burt Watson, Efrain Escadero, a lot of the legends, you know, the great Emmanuel Yarborough who's passed away. Rest in peace. And uh, somebody comes upstairs and tells me, hey, there's these kids out front trying to get autographs. 
I said, that's fine. Let them have an autograph. He said, no, man. They're, they're wanting like 20 apiece. They're trying to, they're, yeah, 20 autographs from every fighter. So I go down and I ask them nicely. You guys need to go. You know, the show's tomorrow. You come get the autographs that you want. We have a little tussle. I go in the building and I'm obviously upset. Paul Varlin says, let me go out and talk to these guys, right? So he, out the door he goes. He walks up to the window, and it's a bunch of young kids, about 20, that think the Ultimate Fighter House 1 was the first ever MMA event, you know. <laughs> and Paul goes up and tells him, you've got to go. And this kid leans over, and he says, and pardon my French, everybody, but Paul Varlin says, who, that he says, who the fuck are you? The Paul Varlins, right? The minute I hear it, I run for the door, because I know it's not going to end good. <laughs> I run in the door and I, I, I yell at Joe Riggs and everybody. I'm like, guys, you got to come out here. You got to come out here. By the time we come out, Paul's literally rocking the car. I mean, I thought he was going to flip this little Honda over, screaming in the window at these kids. Oh and Burt Watson, Burt Watson, two years after leaving the USD, is in a parking lot at two in the morning babysitting UFC fighters. You know what I mean? <laughs> Still doing his job. So, I mean, there's so many stories I could. Literally, I, I should be writing it down for a, a book one day. You know, it's just been a crazy three years. That would be an awesome idea. Like, have a chapter per fighter, or just like a a crazy story. I, I would, I would buy that. Legend of the Cage, the <laughs> book, uh, volume one. You can have, you can have all kind of volumes. You know, yeah. I, I, that's definitely. Uh, uh, that, look at that. When you have the book, you can be like, yeah, we did the idea on this show right now. I don't even want to keep it you just i'm ready for i'm ready to see that book man i'm ready to go buy that book right now barnes and nobles borders amazon i'll buy it on my kindle give me all of that man that that's funny dude i love that i love to hear stories like that man just be, because i've had somebody like uh, art davy stitch duran those guys had the most fucking stories i've ever had of like i would be like listen we we're only gonna have you know i'm only gonna keep 20 20 30 minutes these guys just talk and talk, and it's not like a bad talk. It's not like I'm, I'm like, oh, uh, like these guys just keep talking. Like they just, they've got so much to tell and so much. I don't even, I don't even know what the word is. Experience, so much knowledge, so much, just life, so much, just ex stories that they've. That's had. the need, TV show man. That right there is the need. You know, we could bring these fighters on, you know, uh, show a piece that we have from them from the museum, and then it's on. I mean. They have so many great stories about that one event that it could be a show, you know. And what we need from fans is reach out to Viceland. Reach out to Viceland. Oh, We're yeah. talking to Vice. Reach out and tell them you want this show. You know, the more they hear that, the more they're going to know that Legends of the Cage is coming. Dude, that would be awesome to see it on Vice. Like, I've been, I've been like, because, I mean, they had um, Instant Anyway, though, but he, it wasn't really like MMA. It was... Uh, Showing like the Japan, it was like the Japanese, like uh, like the gang street fights or something like that. Like, weren't they following him? It was like an episode like that. I don't know if you caught that, but they had him on uh on. It was like Viceland. It was like an episode of Viceland. I forget what it was about though, but I want to say it was about like the Japanese street gang. Rose up on me, brother. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, brother? Brian, can you hear me? Brian, can you hear me? Brian, can you hear me? Yeah, you were breaking up real bad that last question. Okay, I was saying, did you did you catch uh, Ensign when he was on Viceland? Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Actually, I got yeah. it DVR'd, man. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, did you see when he grabbed that bottle from the the head of the accuser? Yeah, dude. Like. Man, that dude is serious. Like I, I, I've heard him on the on the Rogan podcast like so many times, and it just seems like, man, that guy has so many like, I don't know if it's dealings or ins and outs. Like he knows that culture, and they know him. Like, you, there's like a mutual respect both ways. Like there, there's yeah. I'm uh, man. Somebody you're glad you're friends with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Glad you're friends with. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly it, man. Um, but yeah, like uh, more of that, man. I want to see more of that. But like, if they had like a history of MMA, even, and and it was like a lot of the legends of the cage, like on there. Like, I'm not mad at that. I will tune in plenty of. I will share that with my friends. 
Yeah, everybody, holler at Viceline. Send them some emails. We need to get some more MMA. I, I think, I mean, it's beginning to get a lot of exposure now. Like, big thing, like when Meryl Streep was like, an MMA is not the arts. But, like, you know what? Funny thing, five years ago, if she would have said MMA, like, people would have been like, what the hell is MMA? You know what I mean? So, like, granted, like, okay, she knocked us, kind of, but. We're known now enough to for people to to be aware that MMA stands for something. It's not just UFC. You know what I mean? Which I know is a prime. All she did, all she did was put the the letters MMA in the in the hearts and minds of thousands and thousands of people that had never watched the sport. Right. You know, we want, we want to thank Meryl Streep <laughs> for the shout out for MMA because so many people hated what she said that they went on to check out what it is she didn't like. You know. <laughs> I wonder how many more viewers the UFC and Bellator now have because of that. Uh, yeah. UFC Fight Pass, all them. They want to thank Meryl Streep. Shout outs to her. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, the fact that MMA is now known, you can just do MMA. You no longer have to do, oh, it's cage fighting. Oh, it's UFC. You know, oh, you train UFC. Like, it's now, you can just say MMA. Like, we're now at that point. And I think that that's an important you know, stepping outside of the comments and the context they were used, like, that's an important thing. Like, the fact that we're now recognized by the three letters that we've, I think, all strived and fought for. And and I know that I've had my podcast for and that you've set up your organization for. Um, it's just a beautiful thing, I think, in that aspect that people now know what MMA is. And now it's time to, to show them a little... A little history. We don't have history. You don't have MMA history classes in college. I think we need that, but that's another. Maybe that's a few years from now, whatever the case might be. Uh, but I'd be happy with that, man. But I, I'm so happy to, to see what, what your organization is doing, what they represent, and just kind of the, the movement um, behind it. And I don't know, the momentum, hell, everything that, that you're doing, Brian. It, it's an amazing <coughs> thing, man. Um, what's What's next on the horizon outside of movies and, and shows i mean is there a next move that the museum obviously i mean what are what are the, some other goals that that legends of the cage wants to do man can you hear me yeah we're going to be out at the kumite classic at the pittsburgh Expo. okay can you hear me yeah, yeah yeah i can hear you there we go yeah we're going to be out at the kumite classic the pittsburgh fitness expo memorial day weekend um, it's going to be a huge event, 13,500 expected. Jeez. I would like for it to be 25,000 with the legends <laughs> of the cage fans. You know, uh, we're really going to try to bring out quite a few legends this year to the event. We're even working with some current names. Um, it's going to be a big event. We're going to be doing seminars, autograph signings. There's going to be booths. You can actually go in the cage and train with these guys. We have an, an octagon that's going to be there. It's, it's going to be a great event in Pittsburgh and, we're also partnering with Pride Resurrection from Twitter uh, at Pride underscore Res, a great organization. Um, the last time we did the Do Good Things tour, they sent us a, a ton of toys. I mean, a, enough to make it a two-hospital stop instead of a one-hospital stop. <laughs> they actually reached out to me, um, seeing that I was talking about doing another hospital stop tour, and we're partnering up again for – late February, early March, to do another one, either here in Ohio or Indiana. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're on there every day updating fans, letting them know what's going on with Legends of the Cage, or at our website, legendsofthecage.com. That's a beautiful thing, Brian. That's a beautiful thing. Brian, before you get out of here, man, um, it's always a thing I like to do with my guests. If you've heard the show, you know what I'm talking about. Random ass questions. Just like to ask some random ass questions from our guests. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's have a little fun, man. Um, first random ass question, man. Always love this question. I need to know. Favorite drink at the bar? Double shot of Jim Beam. Mm. Whiskey, man. I like, it. I like it. I like it. I love whiskey. All right. Beer. <laughs> there we go, man. Um, all right. Favorite MMA fighter of all time? That's tough, man. That's that's probably the toughest <laughs> question you could ask me because I love them all. I mean, if I had to pick one, it would be Big Daddy, Gary Goodrich. You know, I mean, the guy's just a great guy. I've seen 
some spectacular stuff out of him. As big as he is, his heart's even bigger, you know? And Gary would have to be my, my all-time favorite. I mean, hands down. That's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. All right. Favorite movie of all time? Damn. Rough ones, huh? <laughs> um, couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell That one I'd have to think about. <laughs> There's so many. There are a, cl- a lot of classics, man. There's so many good ones. Um, all right. Most. All right, I'll do this one. Most memorable outside of the Gary Goodrich fight, the one that brought you in. Most memorable fight for you. The Don year. Fry Takayama. Oh, my goodness. Takayama, no doubt. Don Fry Takayama. That's a classic. Yep. Anybody doesn't know. Uh, you Google guys. That uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google that shit, man. Yeah. That's the one. If you, I know you've seen it. It's the guy with the mustache. For those who don't know Don Fry. Uh, the good old American boy with the mustache. And a Japanese kid, and they're just fucking going at it. It was just an amazing, amazing fight. Yeah, that's a classic barn burner right there. All right, move on to the next one. Most exciting experience of your life? Outside of family. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm married, so I'd have to say the day I got married. But the UFC Expo was pretty doggone close. <laughs> uh, the opportunity to meet everybody. I mean, everybody in the UFC. From Oleg Tuck tear off to Paige Van Zandt. You know, I, I got to sit down, have a sit down with Mark Cuban and talk to him about what we're doing at Legends of the Cage. You know, I mean, Dana White and the UFC did a great thing by me by bringing me out for the event and, and, and showing us a good time. And I'd like to thank him. You know, I mean... We don't always see eye to eye on fighter issues, but as far as the UFC goes, I'm probably the biggest fan out there, you know, just like everybody else. I I, I turn it on every week, you know? <laughs> there you go, man. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, we'll do this one, man. We'll just throw this one out there. Uh, celebrity Crush. Again, I'm married. Uh we won't tell your wife. We won't tell your wife. We'll edit this part out. She's watching. She's watching. Eight <laughs> fans, aunt. I'd have to say it. <laughs> Jessica go. Alba. Jessica Just, Alba. Jessica Alba. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah. she can she get it. Eight fans, aunt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. All right. Um, they write a book about your life, as far as all the. MMA stuff and everything like that, man. What would it be called? Preserving a sport, I guess. Because between Legends of the Cage, the museum, the TV show, you know, that's that's what it's about. It's just preserving the history of this sport. So, you know, if, if I go down in history for anything, I hope it's the fact that people remember these guys. There we go. I like it. I like it. All right. If they make a movie about your life. Who's playing you? Ving Rhames. <laughs> All right. I want a bat. <laughs> Jason Statham. Jason Statham, yeah, there we go. I like that. I can Frank see Edgar. Frank <laughs> Yeah. That's my favorite current fighter. If I have to pick a favorite current fighter, it's Frankie hands down, you know. I mean just the heart in that man. Jesus Christ. And if anybody doesn't know, just go back and watch the, the Gray Maynard, the second and the third fight. Jeez Louise, man. Uh, talk about heart. I love it. I love it. All right, man. Uh, last one, we'll get you out of here. If you were not doing this for the sport, what would you be doing? War. War. You'd be doing Yeah, war. it was war. Oh no! I no! I was saying the second and third Gray Maynard oh, fights yeah. were war. They were. They yeah, were definitely wars, man. Um, yeah, but what would you be doing if you weren't doing this for the sport? What would you be doing, Brian? Well, I own a roofing company. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what I, I still do every day. You know, a uh, full time job and, and and Legends of the Cage is my my after work thing. You know, last night I got in bed at four in the morning and was up at six again this morning. And here it is, what, 12, 31 o'clock in the morning, and I'm still on an interview, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, 
I guess roofing would be what I would do. Yeah, it's where the money is for me. There so we there we go. Well, hopefully, man, we can get a a lot more backing for for the Legends of the Cage movement. I think it's great. Hope a lot of people see this, and I hope a lot of people just kind of make themselves familiar and aware with uh, uh, this great organization, man. I, I definitely want to shout out to you. Thank you so much for for taking the time. I know it's uh, it's a bit late in your time zone, uh, and I want to thank you for you know just all the work we we, we you know we plan on doing and. Uh, all the work you do on all the other podcasts and getting guys uh, on the podcast because I'm definitely always entertained when I hear a Gary Goodridge or Mark Coleman yep. or anybody like that, man. It's always fucking awesome, dude. So thank you so much. If man. there's any legends you want to talk to, man, I'm a phone call away. You know what I mean? Like, I'll make it happen. Definitely appreciate that. Thank you so much, Brian. Brian, let everybody know. Uh, where they can find you on uh, on social media again, and and shout out just just whoever you want to sponsors, fighters, anybody you want. This the floor is yours, my man. Yeah, I mean, any more the easiest way is to Google Legends of the Cage. I mean, <laughs> there's Twitter, there's Instagram, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn. You know, I mean, if there's a social media site out there, we're hitting it. You know, so uh, the best place would be our website, legendsofthecage.com. Facebook at, at Brian Moore or Legends of the Cage. And, of course, our Twitter at, at TrueMMAHOF. And we're not hard to find. I mean, like I said, Google Legends of the Cage, we're everywhere. I love it. I love it. I love it. Brian, thank you so much for coming on, my man. Um, we'll stay in touch. Hopefully we can have you on again as you got to make more announcements, have some more of your, your guys on. That would be that would be great. And, uh, yeah, just just thank you so much, man, for everything you're, you're doing now. All this movement. I'll stay in touch with you, and uh, we hope everybody goes and visits your your website and uh, kind of keeps the movement uh, moving along. That's what it is, man. The <laughs> fan love. You know, the the every fan that clicks that follow for Legends of the Cage, you're supporting this movement. You're supporting getting these guys back out there to visit you. You know, so reach out and show us some love. That's all it is, man. That's all it is. We just gotta. Stay together as a community. Everybody out there, go click like, go click follow. Uh, follow them on Instagram, Facebook, everything like that. Brian, thank you so much, my man. You have a good rest of the night. And, uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch, man. Yep, you too. And thanks to everybody out there that makes this possible. There it is, man. There it is. All right, Brian. Well, you do have a good rest of the night. Uh, stay safe. And uh, good luck with, with all the endeavors you guys are doing this year, man. I'm, I'm excited to see what, what what's new. Yep. You have a nice night too, Blake. All right, my man. Thank you very much, man. Peace.